Welcome to my channel. As promised, in this video there will be another person speaking about the acid-base balance in horses with practical examples. If you missed the previous video, you can find here on top. Um, this person is Judith View. She graduated and worked at the University of Barcelona for several years, where she also did the residency in equine internal medicine and the PhD on acid-base balance in foals and in endurance horses. So she will be the best person to speak about this topic. There is also another news in uh, this video and is that it will be a more interactive video in which you will actually have the time to think about the cases and the acid-base balance. So if you like the video, press like but also if you would like to see more collaboration like this uh, with different people explaining different topics please comment the video and let me know and also if you like the style of uh, these more interactive videos please leave a comment so I, I will know and I will try to adjust the next uh, videos and now I will leave you with Judith Hi to everybody, my name is Judith Bew and I'm going to present you a couple of clinical cases to practice the interpretation of acid-base balance in horses First of all we are going to remember the steps to follow for the interpretation of blood gases presented by Valentina in the previous video. The first step is look at the pH that appears in our gases. If pH value is decreased below the range 7.38 is called acidemia and if the pH is increased outside of the range 7.38 45 is considered alkalemia. The second step is to evaluate the respiratory component of the acid base. The gases that you are going to see later are venous gases, therefore the reference value are slightly different especially in the oxygen and PCO2 concentration. Taking into account the venous origin of our samples, we will look at the PCO2. If the value is below 45, the horse has respiratory alkalosis and if we have a value above 65, the horse has respiratory acidosis. The third step corresponds to checking the levels of base excess or bicarbonate. Even if this belongs to the traditional method, can help us detect metabolic alterations because traditional method is more descriptive than mechanistic. The fourth step corresponds to checking and calculating the effect of electrolytes on the pH. As Valentina explained in the previous video, in the quantitative method we have three independent variables. One of them, PCO2, it was checked in the second step, but it is necessary to assess the other variables. The strong ion difference or seed, which corresponds the ion effect on pH and a thought that corresponds to the influence that proteins have also on pH. The main alteration will be caused by changes in the strong ion difference and not in the a thought because a thought have very little influence on the pH and only few cases in which there are a huge hyperproteinemia will have a significant influence on pH. So we recommend not calculate it except in cases where there are alterations in proteins. If you have to calculate it, the simplified equation is the product of total protein and 2.24 for adults or 2.5 for foals. The strong ion difference calculation, that is our main metabolic influence in pH, as mentioned in Valentina, may or may not include lactate, and its formula is the following one. This value in horses must be between 38 and 45. We can divide the alterations into acidosis due to a decrease in a strong ion difference caused or not by hyperlactatemia and alkalosis due to an increase in a strong ion difference. Finally, finally, last step is look for primary alterations of the pH and which changes are compensations. 
Most typical compensations are made by a respiratory system, but in current cases could be also metabolic changes to compensate the pH. Okay, the first clinical case that we are going to present corresponds to a 24 hours old female Frisian crossbred named Macarena. Fo was referred to the hospital with history of progressive weakness and flexor tendon retraction. And here are the blood gases of this case. The first step is look at the pH. In this case, the pH is 7.42. It is at the upper limit of normality, but still normal. Detected. The second step is look at the PCO2 to assess the respiratory component. In this case, it is 34.9, below the lower limit of normality. Therefore, Macarena has respiratory alkalosis. The three step is look at the base access. In this case, it is equal to zero. Therefore, they are within the normal range of normality. In case that we only interpret the blood gases based on the traditional method, no metabolic disturbances are detected. But it's important to remember that it's possible to have metabolic alterations without base excess changes, and that it happens in this form. The fourth step is look at the electrolytes, lactate, proteins, and strong ion difference in ATOT. This fall has a huge hyponatremia with hyperkalemia and mild hyperlactatemia. Now we can calculate the strong ion difference. The strong ion different value is clearly decreased due to market hyponatremia partially masked by the increase in potassium levels. And on the other hand, we, have also, we can also calculate the ATOT. There is no significant alteration in ATOT. Therefore, the fall has metabolic acidosis due to decreasing in a strong ion difference with slight increase in lactate, and the main cause of this acidosis is the decrease in sodium levels. Could be something more? The graphic presentation of the electrolytes and positive and negative charges is called a gambelgram. This graphic presentation could help us to see if there are any alterations in unmeasured ions because there are a gap, a difference between the positive and negative charges. In our case, the positive and negative charges are more or less equal. This leads to interpreted that there are no changes in non-measured ions. In summary, the alterations of acid-base balance in Macarena are the following ones. We have a normal pH with a compensatory respiratory alkalosis and market acidosis due to decrease in strong ion difference levels. This decrease is due to the hyponatremia and mild hyperlactatemia but it's also masked by the increase in potassium levels. The main problem in this fall is this hyponatremia and this hyperkalemia. It's important to identify the cause of decrease in the strong ion difference in order to apply the right treatment. In this case, it's also important the way of correction of these alterations, because when we have a very huge hyponatremia, the mm, correction of sodium levels too fast can lead to neurological lesions, and high levels of potassium can lead to cardiac arrest. These alterations in electrolytes are very typical of two different pathologies in neonates. One of them is the urabdomen, and the other one 
another one it's a massive myositis that for the age of the fall the most probably cause is the nutritional myopathy or white muscle disease in both cases very marked hyponatremia occurs together with hyperkalemia therefore the biochemistry should be completed with muscle and kidney profile in case of macarena we have a uh, values of CK and EST extremely high. Based on these results and the story of the fall, we can reach the diagnosis of congenital white muscle disease. In the following table, you can see the evolution of the electrolytes until practic practically total normalization and also the values of a strong ion difference. The second case is a male of 9-year-old Arabian horse called Said, presented 24 hours after finish a 120 endurance race at very high speed. After the event, the horse was dehydrated and had synchronic diaphragmatic fluid that improved with fluid therapy. After this initial treatment, the animal was transported back to his stable and the following day the horse was markedly depressed and had tachyarrhythmia and muscle pain on palpation. And here you can see the results of blood gas analysis. First of all we are going to check the pH. In this case the pH was 7.192. This pH is clearly below the normal range. So we can say that SAID has marked acidemia. The second step is check the PCO2. In this horse was 10, 28, also well below its expected value. Therefore, with respect to respiratory component, the horse presents respiratory alkalosis. In the third step, we look at the base excess. In this case, it's also below the normal value. This indicates that we must look for a metabolic alteration that causes acidosis. In the fourth step, we can identify the cause of this acidosis. Uh, in Said, we can see that the cause of this acidosis probably is the hyponatremia with hyperlactatemia. This, they are also present in hypokalemia, but it's very mild. To complete the interpretation, calculate SIT. Strong ion difference is decreased below the lower normality limit due to the hyponatremia and hyperlactatemia. This leads to a strong ion difference acidosis. We can also check the proteins and calculate a ATOT. Of course, there are no changes in a thought because there are no changes in proteins. All the changes that we can see in the pH is due to the decreased value of a strong ion difference. Could be something more. This is the gambogram of SAID and there are no big changes between positive and negative charges. Therefore, no important alterations are present in non-majority ions. To sum up, site present market acidemia, compensatory respiratory alkalosis, market metabolic acidosis with decrease in a strong ion difference, and this decrease is due to a lactic metabolic acidosis with hyponatremia and mild hypokalemia. The main problem in this horse is the hyponatremia. Site has marked alterations of the muscle enzymes myositis and ventricular tachycardia with severe myocardial damage and it also diagnosed it after examining it with hyperammonemic encephalopathy due to colitis. Finally, one extra comment on this case. When we face cases of colitis, there can also be a loss of albumin. In this, and these losses could be important enough to influence the pH, especially if the levels of protein decrease 
below 4.5. In these cases, we recommend calculate that to know the influence of proteins in our pH. If you find useful this video, press like, and if you want to see more educational videos about the clean internal medicine, subscribe to Valentina's channel. Thanks for watching.